I've been eating an animal-based diet for the last three years and I feel like a million bucks. I feel amazing, fantastic, great, like a superhero. There's more information in other videos, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today's topic is sugar. In this video, we are doing what this channel done does best, which is give both sides to the story my unbiased opinion. How carbs made me fat, how carbs made me skinny, who would thrive doing a zero carb diet, and who would benefit doing a higher carb diet, and what is considered high carb. For myself, I have a limit on how many carbs I can have before I start seeing negatives, but then I'll also have different negatives from doing zero carb. So we'll talk about that and address one of the most popular questions I get, which is if someone's trying to lose weight, do they have to be in ketosis, burn fat to lose fat, and avoid carbs? And it all starts now. This video is going to be sweet. I have so many bad dad jokes, you know, if you're one of those people who keep coming back and watching these videos, thank you. A Little bit concerned about you, but you know, I love you. To start, in my mind, there are three buckets of carbs. Bucket one, man-made carbs. Donuts, beer, crackers, jump carbs. The other two buckets are nature's carbs. We got nature's carbs with fiber, like fruits, veggies, nuts, and nature's carbs without fiber, like dairy products and honey. With our man-made foods, not only do they have carbs, but they also have bad fats in them. Vegetable oils, ugh, seed oils, canola oils, trans fats, and they also have artificial ingredients, toxic chemicals, fillers, all sorts of nasty nasties. Plus, they don't have very many vitamins and minerals in them. A donut doesn't have vitamin A, B12, copper, iron, choline, calcium. A donut, it's got hydrogenated soybean oil, sugar, artificial trans fats, chemicals, 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 and that's it. And that is how you make a donut. Just take, take your favorite chemicals and put it together, you got yourself a donut. She had no idea back then, she didn't know. She didn't know what she was doing. So when someone eats junk, man-made concoctions, they eat it and afterwards they're still hungry because it didn't have very many vitamins and minerals, nutrients, protein in it, and so their body's still hungry. If the person then has more of these kind of junky foods, the body says, yo dude, you didn't feed me yet. Come on, give me some nutrients, I'm hungry. So then the person eats more and more and more leading to weight gain. Guilty, this is exactly what happened to me. I was eating foods void of nutrients, so I was constantly hungry, therefore constantly eating, overeating, and then I gained weight. This is why people think carbs made me fat, but was it the chips that caused me to gain weight? No, unfortunately no, I wish I could say it was them, but no, it was overeating that caused weight gain. Oreos don't make people fat, Margaritas don't cause weight gain. Butter doesn't make people obese. Bananas don't cause weight gain. Carbs, sugar don't make people fat. There is not a singular food on the whole planet where if I were to put it on my tongue, tomorrow I would be 100 more pounds. How people gain weight is by eating more food, more fuel than their body requires. So someone can absolutely lose weight by eating only Snickers bars and drinking only Coca-Cola, but if the reason someone wants to lose weight is because they want to be healthier, or even if it's for vanity purposes, even if someone's just trying to lose weight to look good, in both cases, eating junk man-made food concoctions likely not gonna help me with those goals. I'm probably gonna have some acne, yeast infections, depression, fatigue, hormonal imbalances, blood sugar issues. I could still be a diabetic even if I'm skinny. There can be a whole laundry list of health complications eating foods void of nutrients with lots of chemicals. So this is just my opinion. I don't care if I can lose weight eating waffles and fruit roll-ups. I wanna feel good. So I'm gonna pass on that option. Stick to the steak. 
That's a good line. Stick to the steak, Lily Kane. This is a picture of me eating 200 grams of carbs, sugar a day, and likely 1200 calories. So I'm in a calorie deficit. I'm not fat, but I have amenorrhea, UTIs. I'm getting sick three, four times a year. So even though I'm skinny, I'm not healthy. Spend more money for all the times I was sick, getting medications. By all means, someone can lose weight eating junk man-made food, but that's just not what I would do. Then we have nature's carbs. Both have vitamins and minerals in them, but the ones without fiber should be less satiating, less filling. Meaning I can lose weight drinking milk, sure, but if I drink the milk and it only fills me up for 30 minutes, so then I eat more and I have some honey and then I'm still hungry, so then I have some yogurt and I just start to overeat, then I can gain weight. You know, nature's carbs with fiber technically should be more filling and keep someone full and satiated longer. Though in my experience, I don't know. I eat a piece of fruit, I'm still hungry in like 30 minutes. But fiber is supposed to be more filling. Therefore meaning someone's gonna be less likely to overeat. To really drive home this message, I wanna show you guys three pictures of my husband. In picture A, he's very strong, muscular, doing his bodybuilding diet of 300 grams of carbs, 300 grams of protein, and 100 grams of fat. Then a year later, he lost 45 pounds. He was very lean, actually kind of anorexic, eating a vegan diet, having 300 grams of carbs still, about 30 grams of protein, and zero grams of fat. And in picture C, he actually has some weight to lose, even though for the last six months, he had been doing zero carbs, 200 grams of protein, and 220 grams of fat. He was also working out and moving less in picture C. His body needs more food when he moves more, which is why in picture A, he was eating more and not gaining fat. Whereas in picture C, he was gaining fat, even though he was eating less than picture A, he just wasn't moving around and needing as much food in picture C. Okay, so can somebody lose weight eating carbs? Absolutely. Therefore, someone does not have to be in ketosis to lose weight. Though, if someone is insulin resistant, which not everybody who has weight to lose has a problem with their insulin, but if someone's trying to lose weight and is insulin resistant, then it can be harder, not impossible, but harder to lose weight when eating lots of carbs and keeping insulin elevated. So if I was this person, I'd focus more on eating protein and fat to keep insulin levels low and to balance blood sugars. Though at the end of the day, the most critical factor for weight loss is not overeating. And therefore, whether I'm insulin resistant or not, if I'm trying to lose weight, my sole goal, priority, and focus would be to eat foods that keep me full and satiated. Because I can go hungry for an hour, fine. I can go hungry for a day, okay. I can go hungry for a week and probably nobody gets hurt. But eventually, there will be a point I will break and I will be so hungry that I will overeat. So this is why I steer my clients into eating more fat and protein because eating very protein heavy, nutrient dense, fatty foods is really hard to overeat. This is why a carnivore diet is really awesome for weight loss. Not because meat has magical powers for weight loss, but because it keeps someone really happily full. So then they're less likely to overeat and it's tasty and it's easy, and people have a really hard time sticking to things that are complicated or that taste nasty. And so the longer someone can continue to eat the right kinds of foods, the longer they're gonna see weight loss and see results. Now, so far in this video, I have solely only been focusing on the weight loss topic, but certain people, if they have vegetables, they're going to have more ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel-like symptoms, their eczema gets worse, Certain people, if they have fruit, they're going to have their gout flare up, more abdominal pain, more depression. Certain people, if they eat nuts, they have blood in their stool, or they'll break out in hives, their throat becomes itchy. So as far as weight loss goes, people can eat any food, but if we're talking about skin flare-ups, gut distress, mental health issues, if someone eats a carrot and their psoriasis gets worse, 
then who cares if they can lose weight eating vegetables? When trying to lose weight, I would focus on eating foods that are filling, but also foods that don't cause me negative reactions. This leads me to my biased opinion. Okay, who could benefit from a zero carb diet? I think everybody could benefit from doing a carnivore elimination diet, even if it's just temporarily, to see which foods cause what reactions to the body. Because by going super basic, then when someone brings back in asparagus, they can see, oh, does my body thrive more with asparagus? You bring back in an orange, you'd be able to see, how does my body handle oranges? Some people try a carnivore diet and they love it and they just continue doing it forever. Awesome. But otherwise, I think that the vast majority of people could benefit even doing it temporarily just to reset the gut, then slowly add foods back in to see which foods help the body thrive. Because most people, they're eating like 100 foods in a week, so when they're having stomach pain, they don't know, was it from the celery, cherries, Skittles, ranch dressing, cheesecake, breadsticks, it's hard when we have all these confounding factors and variables. So I would just go super basic, do a carnivore diet, just to get more clarity on which foods cause me what. All right, so that was my biased opinion, but my unbiased opinion on who I think could really, really benefit from doing a zero carb diet would be people who have bad insulin resistance, and then oddly enough, people who have OCD. Just from my clients, interviews, people who I've spoken with, it seems to be a very common theme that people who have OCD say how much a zero carb diet helps. So I'm not saying that it's gonna help everybody with OCD, but I am just throwing it out there. Who could benefit from high carb? And what's considered high carb is going to depend on the person, but for simplicity purposes, I'm just gonna say 200 or more grams of carbs a day I would think mainly athletes could benefit doing high carb. Other than that, I can't really say there's a specific autoimmune condition that's going to do better eating high carb for myself. And this is just my experience. When I do zero carb, I will have more stress and anxiety, which therefore, as a result, I will have higher blood sugars and higher cortisol. I also get worse sleep. I don't have as much endurance in the gym and I tend to undereat because I'm just so full that I can't eat enough food. And if I were to continue to undereat for a long period of time, I could have thyroid issues, hormonal imbalances, lower energy, all sorts of things that happen from under eating for long periods of time. But on the flip side, if I have too many carbs, which I couldn't tell you the last time I had more than 100 carbs in a day, but if I have too many carbs, I'll have more acne. My menstrual cycle cramps will come back with a vengeance. I'll cry more, I'll be more moody. My face will puff up. So I'm not getting fat, I'm just holding more water and I like to hold my water in my face. And I'll have more dandruff. If I were to have 100 grams of carbs of sweet potatoes every day, then I will have more knee and joint pain. So my reactions to carbs depends on the kind of carb. A pro and a con for me with carbs is feeling hungry. Because if I just eat protein and fat, I'm so full, I tend to under eat. There can be negatives with that. So I use a little bit of carbs to make me hungrier so I can eat more more protein and fat, but if I were to eat just lots of carbs, then I'm really hungry and I'm hungry all the time and I don't like feeling hungry. So it's like one of those things. I and most of the world consider a low carb diet under 100 grams of carbs a day. I probably have 50 to 70-ish, unless my body's really asking for more. I worked out really hard at the gym, then maybe I'll have a little bit more. But for the most part, you know, like I said, if I go too high, it's not really worth it to me. And then if I go too low, I can do it for a period of time and be fine, but eventually start having some negatives. I do create meal plans and work with people one-on-one -on, -one on how to attain their goals. So if you're interested in any coaching, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Otherwise, don't be silly, subscribe to Lily. I hope you have a happy day and I'll see you in the next one.